This is a Wyckoff schematic, a method of trading using repetitive market psychology to determine a market's next moves. But it's very complicated. So is it worth your time or are there more efficient ways to reach success in the market? I've studied many different market theories throughout my years in trading. And although Wyckoff is a great theory, I found one gigantic issue with following the Wyckoff schematic, and that is hindsight. This is a Wyckoff accumulation schematic on USD CAD. Now I will break down the schematic in more depth in a moment, but for now we have a markdown phase, the accumulation phase, and then the markup phase. The problem I found when studying Wyckoff was that we never really know which part of the Wyckoff theory we are actually in, because the market is going to give us a lot of false signals. Is this the selling climax? Is this the selling climax? Or is this the selling climax? It's only when this big sell-off comes in and this spring comes through that we actually start to make sense of the fact that we were way too early to the party at this point and we would be taking losses trying to buy from this accumulation because the accumulation hasn't finished yet. 10 second shameless plug, I have the biggest sale I've ever ran on my trading academy and all of the programs. Learn the systems my students have used to achieve over $5 million in funding in the past year alone and do it totally risk-free with a seven day money back guarantee. And if you're not ready to do that, check out my free training. All the links are in the description. So the one big problem I always found with Wyckoff is that you end up being very discretionary about which point of the schematic that you're actually in. And this can lead you to take buys or sells way too early, meaning you can take a bunch of losses before the schematic is actually completed. So a Wyckoff schematic is made up of three different parts. We have markdown, accumulation, and markup. Now, if we are looking on a sell side schematic, this would be changed for a markup, a distribution phase, and then a markdown. Essentially, the markdown is just a down move in a market and a markup is just an up move in a market. And then accumulation or distribution is an area where orders are being collected. So a traditional Wyckoff accumulation or distribution schematic is full of different labels and different ideas for every single movement within the consolidation. Selling climax, we have an automatic rally. We have secondary tests. We have secondary test phase Bs. We have springs, tests, last points of support signs of strength, all of these different things. And they become very convoluted when you're actually looking at the market in real time. This is why I said the problem with hindsight really plagues Wyckoff. Because when you go back and look at a market, as we just did with USD CAD, you can see the schematic clearly once it's already played out. But when it's in the process of actually forming, it's very difficult to work out whether or not, for example, this is actually a secondary test, or maybe this is the spring. Maybe the breakout here is going to be the sign of strength. It's very difficult to actually work out where in the schematic you are. And I find that many, many people fail to ever work that out and get stuck in that confusion for a very long time, taking multiple losses before their one win actually comes through. How can we cut the confusion out of the Wyckoff theory and profit from this very real concept of markdowns, accumulations, and markups? So this is my simplified approach to the Wyckoff theory, and I'm gonna talk you through it now. Now, I love the core concepts of Wyckoff. I think the markdown, markup, and accumulation and distribution phases make total sense. Markets are driven by orders. They're driven by the amount of buying versus the amount of selling. And that is exactly what Wyckoff actually presents. In an accumulation phase, we see markdown ending because the sellers are drying up. There's not so much selling pressure in the market. And through the accumulation phase is that flat phase where more buyers are entering the market and more sellers are exiting the market. Then we move into a phase of markup where the buyers have taken control and eventually we will run into a phase of distribution where those buyers leave the market and new sellers enter the market. So it's a constant flow of repetitive market behavior and market psychology that drives the market up, down and sideways in calculated theoretical and logical ways. However, I do not like the confusion of the Wyckoff schematics. What I've actually done myself through testing is turn the Wyckoff theory into a simple price action approach. And this is essentially the schematics that I use within my trading to find my prime setups. So generally an accumulation schematic for me is going to look something like this and a distribution schematic would look something like this. Now it's very simple and I don't really have to account for selling climaxes, automatic rallies, tests, secondary tests, springs, all of this stuff. All I'm looking for is the market to form a liquidity range, which is going to be a sideways piece of price action, just like this. And then under that, I am looking for the market to form a spring, which is going to be that breakout move or the liquidity sweep. So my accumulation schematic is going to turn into liquidity range, liquidity sweep, breakout, and continuation upwards. A distribution schematic for me is going to look like a liquidity range, liquidity sweep, breakout, and sell off. Very simple and very similar both ways. So how does this actually fall into the same category as Wyckoff theory? Well, pretty much when we're looking at a Wyckoff schematic, 
In the larger picture, what we're looking for is for liquidity to build up within a range and then liquidity to be swept with the spring, which is basically the final attempt by the sellers to drive the market down and then the big drive up where the sellers fail and new buyers come in at these very low levels ready to take the market into a new phase of markup. Obviously, the Wyckoff schematic has got all of those confusing little bits in there, but I don't really think that we need to incorporate those into our trading in order to succeed and my testing would tell me the same. So here is a distribution schematic on the dollar index. Can you see it? So we have our markup phase, our liquidity range phase where the market consolidates sideways. Then we have the spring, a very important part of any accumulation or distribution schematic. This is basically a final push to reach through the liquidity above this consolidation range here. And also the final attempt at buying from the buyers before the sellers take control. And then we move into the markdown phase, which is where the sellers take over the market and the market moves into a new phase of downward price action. And if you remember back to the schematic, where would we actually look to enter this trade? Well, that would be within this supply area here. So what we're looking for in these phases is a push down, a mini redistribution in terms of a supply zone before the proper break of structure. And then that little supply zone there is going to be where our selling takes place. So taking it back to that simplified schematic I showed you, here it is in action. Mark up, liquidity range, liquidity sweep, mark down. Mark up, liquidity range, liquidity sweep, mark down. And here is an accumulation schematic on Euro GBP. Do you see this one? Here it is. We have the markdown the liquidity range, the liquidity sweep, and then the mark up phase afterwards. And as you can see, it's very easy to follow because we don't take any action until we get the sweep and then a breakout. Now, in this example, you can see we had a very clear entry point from this demand zone here. So we had a push up, we pulled back. This is that reaccumulation we spoke about before the structure broke. And then after the structure broke, that reaccumulation area there or that demand zone there becomes our buying point. And as you can see, if you'd have brought from there, you'd have been running a very, very happy trade. So this approach to simplified Wyckoff theory allows me to catch really nice trades without having to go through the confusion of looking through every single step of an accumulation schematic. I've turned this into a price action based approach, which uses the same theory of sellers and buyers at battle, but simplifies everything to look only for a consolidation range, a sweep, and then a break of structure. And that is then going to lead into our upside or downside trends, depending whether we're looking at an accumulation or a distribution schematic. So that's it. It's that simple. Now, there are a few final points I want to talk about in terms of my simplified approach to Wyckoff before we finish the video. And those are number one, this theory is fractal, meaning it can be applied to any time frame and will provide similar results. So you can see these schematics on the one minute time frame. You'll also see the same liquidity range, liquidity sweep, break of structure movements on the four hour time frame, the daily time frame, the weekly time frame, absolutely any time frame. So whether you are a day trader, a swing trader, a scalper, it does not matter. These setups will be able to benefit you regardless of the timeframes that you trade. Another thing is that you always want to consider the supply and demand because this is where you're going to be getting your entries and your exits for these trades. Now, when you're trading one of my simplified Wyckoff schematics, a demand zone or a supply zone will always be the point of which you want to get into the trade. If you look back at both the examples, you'll see that the buy was taken from a demand zone and the sell was taken from a supply zone just before the break of structure occurred. In terms of targets, you'll also want to use supply and demand for getting out of your trades. When we get into a trade like this, we are following the start of a new trend reversal. So it's difficult to see where the trend is actually going to stop. The simplest way to find a safe exit for your trade is to look to the left in that markdown phase before the accumulation happened or in the markup phase before the distribution and find an imbalanced supply or demand zone. If you find an imbalanced supply or demand zone like that, you'll be able to find a clear target for your trade and that is going to help you to avoid losses. So hopefully you can go away with the information I've given you today and test this out for yourself and hopefully find some successes with those concepts of Wyckoff theory in a much, much more simplified manner. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe because I post educational videos and analysis videos every single week. And make sure you check out this video too on the psychological topics of trading to show you exactly what I would do if I had to start again all the way from zero. Thank you for watching and keep enjoying the content.